What's going on guys? It's GVP Baby. Welcome back to another weekly review. I hope everybody's doing well and let's get straight into things. So we're going to start on the dollar. We're going to start on the monthly. We've finally started September. So welcome to September everybody. And yeah, I'm going to start on the monthly. Now I'm expecting a down close candle this month. So if you've been watching me for a while now, as in before August, you'll know that I was expecting a down close month with August. You can see that delivered very nicely. And now moving into the month of September, I'm also expecting a down close month, meaning that I'm expecting the high to be made ideally within the first week or two of September with the rest of September being able to have most of the expansion. So generally speaking, when I'm entering the month, I'm expecting it to play out like this. We make the high and then we expand mid month to create the low and then we return back into the range, just like what we saw happen in the month of August. So that that's how we generally approach monthly profile any well any candle that's how we're generally approaching it obviously it doesn't always deliver that clean but with that in mind it allows us to navigate the month much better and what i mean by that is that we can likely anticipate okay if we want to see the high get made in the first one or two weeks then that means we're likely going to um, ex expect some kind of up close candles to form and then on the weekly that is and then obviously towards the end of the month we want to see more down close candles so with that all taken into account let's take a look at the monthly and try and find out what kind of pd arrays we can use to help us frame the month what i have got my eyes on is this long wick right here now one thing ict always talks about is how wicks are gaps too so if we look at this and imagine it's a fair value gap let's drag it right out you can see how we've closed below it meaning that this should now act as a bearish fair value gap now i'm not going to call it a fair value gap because it's not it's a wick but we're going to treat it as one meaning that we want to look at the midpoint of it specifically so i'm going to get that marked out and also we want to look at the low of it and low of it and because we've traded through it on the downside and closed below it that means when price returns to it we're looking to find resistance there so let's get all these um, levels marked out and i hope this will make sense but um yeah, these are going to be the monthly levels I'm definitely going to be paying attention to. So we've got that level and that level. And then we've got monthly consequent encroachment. Monthly consequent encroachment, sorry. Make that black. And we'll make this line dashed. And then we've got a monthly low as well. Like so. So now we have two levels where we're expecting to find resistance. Ideally, price only trades to this level. It can dip, you know, into that 25% level as well. I'm not going to pay too much attention to that for now, but that is still a possibility. I will get it marked out just in case we do see some PD arrays at that level. And the, what I mean by that is that basically once we drop down to the low timeframes, I'll be looking at this monthly level, the 50% level and the 25% level to see what weekly or daily PD arrays are lying around here that price may want to trade into to help us turn around and get that expansion to the downside that we're looking for. So I am looking at this as a south side liquidity target on the monthly. So we'll get that marked out like so. And now we have a premium and a discount that we're expecting price to trade around. Now all of my lines are red right now. So let me just make the premium ones blue just to create a, dif just a differentiate. And now let's go down to the weekly. And as you can see, we've had a large up close week last week. So moving into the new week, I am expecting another up close week. Why? Well, like I said, I'm looking for the high of September to be made in this range. Um, we've had a large up close week the week before. We have some premium PD arrays in the pre like as in, you know, we've got fair value gaps here, here, and even up here, but I don't want to see price go up there. And then look how many down close candles we've had one two three four five days of down close candles so it's very likely that we're going to have an up close week so with that taken into account just like on the monthly but on a weekly basis i want to see the low of the week get made monday tuesday maybe wednesday expansion wednesday thursday through to friday now it isn't it's in, it is non-farm payroll week isn't it let me just quickly check i need to start doing my um news before i start the videos again anyway yeah, this week we have high impact news on Tuesday with PMI, um, job openings on Wednesday, Thursday, PMI again and jobless claims and then the beautiful, famous non-farm payroll. So what kind of PD rates do we have? Well, we first we have this massive fair value gap right here. I'd like to think that this can get filled as a weekly fair value gap. So let's get that marked out. So I'm looking for price to trade and fill that. 
and then if price manages to trade if price manages to trade through that i'll be looking at this implied fair value gap between this close uh, this close and this low this is what we call an implied fair value gap just because it's not very clear but basically there's only downside delivery here so if we get through this it's very likely that price may want to push into this range as well but i'm not going to pay too much attention to that right now what i'm going to look at however is going to be this wick because remember wicks are gaps too and we can look at the midpoint and get that marked out and what you'll find is that this midpoint is also above this weekly high as well so it'll be very interesting very interesting to see what kind of pd arrays are lying around this level right here and we'll put weekly consequent encroachment so we do have quite a few levels on here right now I'm, not, I'm gonna get rid of this just to clean it up a bit um, and now we know first we want to see if we can trade through this and if price wants to be over Dallas it will run for this high which is a weekly high so it's significant and there will be significant stops above there and into that weekly consequent encroachment now let's go in, in terms of discount i don't really expect us to drop down into this sell side liquidity for now um, and i think the daily will probably give us the best shot at figuring out where a potential discount is so that weekly consequent encroachment just happens to line up with a bearish order block on the daily so again this makes this level right here very high probability to get traded to and you can see we also have a breaker block right here why we have a low a high a low a low and then price is expanded to the upside so now i'm going to be watching this last up close candle to act as a breaker price should be able to find support on this to then send it higher and into our premium so let's get that marked out and we're also going to change the color um, but this is what we call a bullish daily bullish breaker and let's make this let's make this red because it's a discount pd array so again i the ideal week for me would be to see the low get made at this daily daily breaker sorry the ideal week would be for the low to get made here and for us to expand up however because it's non-farm payroll i wouldn't be surprised if price you know messed about a bit as we might we might find that we trade into the weekly fair value gap first maybe come back down and then expand higher but generally speaking <clears throat> the midpoint of this breaker is the very lowest i would ideally want to see price trade it can reach down into this discount but as far as i'm concerned this should be able to hold price now Ideally, what we're going to do is we're going to let Monday trade. So I'm only going to drop down to the four hours, the lowest time frame, since it's a weekly review. But usually after Monday, we should be able to get a better idea of price of how price should trade. Now, usually on non-farm payroll weeks, I'm usually good until Wednesday, and then after Wednesday, it tends to get very messy, and my accuracy can greatly decrease. But generally speaking, we have a nice discount PD array here. We want to see this weekly fair value gap get filled, which very well could happen tomorrow as well. So do be aware of that and let's just drop down to the four hour and then up here like i said will be a nice premium to see if price can reach up into that but moving into monday i would you know i wouldn't be surprised if price did you know try and fill this weekly fair value gap and then maybe we get like a tuesday reversal to then come and create some kind of low but um yeah i'll be i'll be paying very close attention to this um, moving into monday but generally speaking i don't tend to trade mondays but there is a nice buy side target right there so it'll be nice to see if Monday can take that buy side liquidity out before getting that potential reversal to create the law to go and then create the law of the week. So I hope that will make sense. Um, but yeah, ideally, I will just let Monday trade and do its thing. So that's going to be everything on dollar. I hope that will make sense. Generally speaking, I'm looking for the high to be made nice up in this premium with the low being held up by this daily breaker and then a potential run before we make the low on Monday or Tuesday. Um, to kind of create some kind of manipulation above this buy side liquidity and then trade on lower but um yeah that's going to be everything on dollar let's now head over to gbp usd we'll start here on the monthly as well and obviously if we're expecting a not close an, an up close a down close month on a down close month on dollar then we want to see an up close month on pound so where do we want to see pound trade to well did we did we close this in we didn't fully close that fair value i'm looking at this bearish order block on pound so let's get that marked out as a monthly bearish order block and then in terms of discount we're going to do the exact same thing we did with dollar we're looking at this wick because wicks are gaps too and the 50 percent level of this will be the very lowest i expect price to trade for me to remain bullish so let's get that marked out as monthly consequent encroachment like so so now we have a nice discount pd array on a monthly basis that that will help us frame this month 
and then we have a nice premium to try and aim for. So now let's drop down to the weekly. Um, close on the low, very interesting. We're expecting a down close down close week so we want to see the high get made earlier in the week not really much information here so we'll drop to the lower time frames but we're looking for pd arrays in this range to help us key off to then expand lower down into our range now we have this huge weekly fair value gap i'm not going to draw out the entire fair value gap just because it's too big <laughs> that's what she said but we're going to look at the 50 percent level to get traded to um as as a target within that range so let's get that dashed and marked out and we can call that uh, consequent encroachment off a fair value gap which is just the midpoint so we'll have that marked out there just because we at least have one target to try and trade to first with us ideally being able to see if we can get into that consequent encroachment and close this gap in completely but generally speaking there's not much information on this time frame and that's why we then drop down to the daily and you can see we've had a very bearish week last week closing quite steeply we have a nice breaker here high low high high we can mark out the low of that breaker and that will now give us a level that we'd like to see the high of this week potentially get made. So that's all assumed as this high gets made, if price does want to return back to that breaker, which is very close to the order block, I'll be looking at dollar closely to see if it can come back down into this breaker. It's as simple as that. So I'll be cl paying close attention to this premium PD array to try and send price lower. Let's drop down to the four hour and see what we can find. And you can see again that lines up with a nice bearish order block and another like breaker within a breaker almost. So generally speaking, I'm looking for the premium PDA. I'm looking for us to be rallying. I'm looking Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. I'm looking for some kind of rally into this premium, into this range up here, ideally between here more specifically, for us to create a nice premium for price to then help send it into the discount. But um, like I said, it's best to just let Monday trade, but I'm looking for this to be the premium high low high high break lower so i'm looking at this low again price may find that's very sensitive and that can help create a nice reversal at the high of the week to potentially run us down into our discount pd array which um also lines up with a, a nice order block right here as well so we'll talk more on that tomorrow but generally speaking expecting a down close week so we're looking we're looking we're actively looking for some kind of rallying but that rallying might not happen until Tuesday or Wednesday, and sometimes they like to do that, especially on non-farm payroll weeks. What's also interesting to me is this massive gap right here. So if we look at this range between this high and this low, this is a inversion fair value gap because we've closed below it. So if price returns back into this range, which we're anticipating, the very highest we want to see it trade is that 50% level, because any higher than that, and it's not as bearish as we think. And the fact that that 50% level lines up nicely with the range we've already delineated, again, adds confluence as to why if price does manage to retrace into that, we can start looking for short-term opportunities to run lower. So yeah, but it'll be interesting to see. So nonetheless, this is a very high, I doubt, I doubt price is going to even reach into that, to be honest, especially looking at that consolidation. Ideally, I've got my eyes set on this level right here. So that's going to be everything on pound. We're going to finalize, finish, we're going to finish up on Euro USD start on the monthly here as well same thing exact same thing guys um up close up close month we want to see the low get created um, i'm going to be looking at this wick now we have a choice of wicks we have this wick and this wick it's like which one do i use well the 50 percent level of this lines up with the 50 percent level of this so it's kind of like potato potato at this point is in the same thing when i'm marking these things out although i'm i appear to be very be, although i appear to be being let me say that again. Although I appear to be being very specific with my levels, it's just a range, as in like, I'm marking this level out because I know when I drop down to the lower time frames, I'll be able to find things around this level that can help support my thesis. Nonetheless, in terms of high of the month, I wanna see this high get taken, but before it does this, it has this whole wick to tackle. So let's get that consequent encroachment marked out because once it can reach that, we know it has the ability to reach that. And that's what I mean. It's about choosing the low hanging fruit for us to trade to first before we start thinking about, you know, all the exciting highs and the runs, etc. Also, we know that Euro is considerably weaker right now compared to Euro. I mean, Euro is considerably weaker compared to Pound. Nonetheless, down close week, Again, same thing, not enough information on the weekly. Nonetheless, fair value gap here, I'm expected that to get traded through, so I don't really need to mark that out. Nice order block lined up nicely with this level right here, so that adds to our confluence. But first, we have this long wick on the weekly. So let's get the consequent encroachment off that marked out first, because we may find that the low of this week may be, found, may be made here, as in price may want to target this. 
and then let's get a few things marked out. This was a weekly, and no, this was a monthly consequent encroachment. This is a weekly consequent encroachment. Ooh, um. And then this is a also a week weekly consequent encroachment. Or was it monthly? I think it's monthly. Yeah, it's monthly. Um, but generally, I'm going to be seeing if price can target this as the low of this week, and then we're looking for a premium anywhere below this consequent encroachment. So really, this monthly consequent encroachment, I'm not really paying too much attention to, because um, I've got my eyes on this. But let's go to the daily nonetheless. And you can see what I mean by how weak price is. Again, breaker, high, low, high, high. I mark out the low lines up now when you got a breaker that lines up with a fair value gap very high probability assuming price can reach it sometimes price may not even be able to make it up there depending on how weak we are but nonetheless let's have that marked out because that might be a nice setup for us in the premium and then this is our discount pdra but we have a bearish order block to get through first so euro is looking a lot more messy so to speak um so we do need to be careful. Again, ideally, I'm just going to let Monday trade and do its thing. Um, but generally speaking, I'd, generally speaking, I'd like to think we can see some kind of rallying again Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday to create some kind of high, and then to trade on low into daily into the daily bullish order block. And if it wants to be crazy, the weekly consequent encroachment. But yeah, that's going to be everything, guys. Remember, it's non-farm payroll, very low probability this week but generally speaking that's what i'm expecting i want to see a down close week so i'm looking for the high to be made earlier on in the week but if we do get something like a thursday reversal or you know non-farm payroll is wild it could easily create you know it's not uncommon it's not crazy for non-farm payroll to create the high and low in the week lower it's not crazy for non-farm payroll to create the high and low of the week in one day and we need to remember this because it could you know trade Monday through Wednesday, fine. Thursday, consolidate. And then Friday, it might rally all morning and then non-farm payroll hits it and goes and creates a low of the week. So we need to remember that weeks can play out like that. Although I'm saying what I want to see, we do need to like be very careful on weeks like these. And obviously, I'll just let Monday trade. And then after that, we'll see what PD arrays have been traded to. And dependent, dependent on that, we can use that to act accordingly and get to the next PD array. Because all price is doing is going between these PD arrays. ICT said it himself, all price does is goes from discount to premium, premium to discount. And that's why I show you premium PD arrays and discount PD arrays. Because once it goes to one PD array, I can then expect, okay, it's treating this like this, therefore we can expect this. Or it's treating this like this, therefore we can expect the next one to get traded to. So it's, it's, it sounds simple. Obviously trading and reading the charts are two different skills. And, you know, this is looking awfully weak. We, we very well might trade into that earlier on. Then I think, then I realise. But my point being, at least we know where price is. You know, it's not just a matter of us guessing. We know where it is. Oh, we're at the daily bullish order block. Oh, we're at the daily breaker. So we can expect certain things to be happening at these levels at certain times of the day with certain sentiments such as news. Anyway, hope that's been insightful, guys. Don't forget to smash subscribe, join the mailing list, join me on Discord. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.